few weeks back, I actually got to see Bill Stewart play live, which this is the first time I've ever seen him play live. I've listened to many hours of recordings of him, watched many hours of videos of him playing, uh, but I've never had the chance to actually sit in front of him. And I got to sit pretty close. I was about 20 feet from the drums. So I really got a sense of his sound, a sense of his cymbals, and he was gracious enough to talk to me after. And we had a chat for a few minutes about his cymbals, about the kind of cymbals he likes. And I actually got to check out the cymbals that he had brought. Uh, I got to pick them up, I got to look at the shape, and it's a topic I really want to dive into in this video. I recently made a video about symbol volume, and this volume concept really does have a lot to do with perspective. Oftentimes drummers think that the thinner their symbols, the darker and the lower pitched and the quieter their symbols will be. And in uh, a broad sense, that's true. But when you start to get into the minutia of medium to medium thin to thin symbols, there is uh, some factors that you have to take into account to make sure that you're actually not working against the goal that you have for the kind of symbol sounds you want. In essence, it can be beneficial to have a little bit more weight on a thinner symbol. So within the range of thin symbols, have one that's a little bit on the higher end of that weight wise. Uh, and this can actually give you a sense of uh, a, a more versatile sound, uh, one that you can pull many different sounds out of and one that you don't have to necessarily baby and just play in a very particular way to get it to sound right. Uh, essentially really thin symbols can open up very quickly and very easily and they can be overpowering. So the spread can really bloom at a low volume and you end up muddying up your stick definition. You end up with a symbol that really only functions when you're playing it quietly. Now, Bill Stewart is an incredibly dynamic player. He plays very, very soft. He also plays these explosive, uh, these explosive licks and explosive accents on the symbols and so he needs symbols that have a wide dynamic range so when i had a chance to actually check out the symbols he brought to this gig what i noticed was these were not thin symbols by any means uh, the 22 he had in his main position was over 2600 grams he had symbols that were very much medium in weight they were crashable uh, but they had enough clarity on the stick that he could play them very soft and he could really dig in and you would still get that symbol to speak and you would hear all of the rhythms that he was playing on the symbol. They didn't get muddied up by the, the spread and the wash that was coming off um, in, the, in the overtones of the symbol. So I came back to my shop and the very next day I pulled four blanks out and I started making these symbols with the intent to make four symbols that were inspired directly from the symbols that Bill had at his gig. He had two main rides I was, I was aiming at. The one in his main position, like I said, was 22 inches and it was over 2,600 grams. He had one right to the right of it and that symbol was also 22 inches and it was probably closer to 2,500 grams, kind of in the 2,500 to 2,600 range. And they had different characteristics, but they were pretty similar. Uh, so I made two of these rides aimed at the the one on his far right and the other two were main, aimed at his main position ride. And as I made these symbols, I noticed pretty quickly that uh, the, the challenge was going to be to bring out the grit, the complexity, and the trashiness that that symbol has. Given the fact that at those weights, those medium weights, the symbols can tend to sound pretty clean, uh, pretty pristine, and they can tend to sound a little bit shallow with the with the sonic frequencies. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of depth to the sound. So I had to really think about, okay, how do I draw out the complexity? How do I draw out the warmth? How do I separate the sound so that you had um, that high fidelity sound that I like to talk about? Now, as a little refresher uh, from the first video that I did, I also talked in that video about his playing technique. And there's a couple things I want to note about the way 
that he plays. When he grips the stick, he'll oftentimes uh, do what's called the, uh, the click grip or a grip that allows uh, there to be this very woody stick definition to come from the cymbal. And in essence, there's different ways of doing it, but in essence, you're kind of making your hand into a cavity like you would if you were playing a clave. And then you also grip the stick a little bit tighter. And this actually chokes the sound of the stick and gives a more articulate sound when you're playing the patterns. It's also very difficult to, uh, to do this and play fast patterns. It's, very, it, it's much easier to keep a very loose grip if you want to play uh, the swing pattern and use the bounce of the surface of the ride to actually play your patterns. But there is little tiny ways where you can just grip the stick slightly harder and you can kind of drive your thumb into the stick and sort of drive that uh, that sound into the cymbal so that you get a very pointed, articulate, woody sound from your stick definition. So make sure you're listening with headphones, but I'm going to show you uh, an example of this. Basically, I'm going to play the, the cymbal with a very, very loose grip where you could literally just you know, pull the stick out of my hand super easily, and I'm going to play with a lot of bounce, and you're going to see how open the sound of the cymbal is. Then I'm going to play with this click grip, and you're going to hear the difference in the articulation. Now, secondly, with his cymbals, he goes an extra step further from just adjusting his grip to get this click uh, sound out of his ride. He also takes felts, uh, extra felts, and the, the wing nut on top of the cymbal stand, and he really cranks it down. And this kind of squeezes the cymbal together between the felts and it really chokes the sound of the spread and gives you a very fast uh, shoulder sound and a really fast choked crash sound. I'd be willing to guess that the reason he does this is he wants his explosive crashes to get out of the way quick so he can get back to the patterns he's playing and the crash sound doesn't overshadow uh, the kind of patterns that he's playing. He really wants clarity, I would imagine. And that's the reason why he, he really clamps it down. Plus this also adds to that perceived sound of his stick definition. So oftentimes we can think, oh wow, that symbol itself has great stick definition, but there's really many other factors that go into play. There's the stick you use, the, the type of tip that it has, the type of grip that you're using. And then if you're doing some kind of funky setup like squeezing the cymbal on the cymbal stand with extra felts. But anyway, enough talk. Let's listen to these four rides. You guys let me know what you think.
right, so that is the Bill Stewart Ride Cymbal Sound Part 2. Uh, I will link the Part 1 video that I made a few years back in the, in the description below so you guys can check that out and let me know what you think about that video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't, and the bell if you want notifications. Thank you guys for watching. I am Timothy Roberts. See you guys next time.